So now we are going to learn about the properties files. Now, if uh, you are building any automation framework, especially in Java, um, you will come across this useful feature in Java, which is called the properties, right? So what is the properties? It is mainly used to store your configuration parameters, right? So there are a lot of configuration values, uh, which I will show you in a little while, uh, which you'll be using in your framework. Right, so these values could be made configurable by putting it in the properties files, right? And each parameter is stored as a key value pair, okay? So here, both the key and value are of type string, right? And if you want to know um, this property properties is a child of hash table, right? So if you know about hash table, um, it is very similar to that, but here both the key and value pairs are of string, right? So we'll see how uh, you can um, build a properties file or how you can construct um, different values inside the properties files. Okay, so what is the advantage of using properties? Obviously, uh, the advantage is very, very clear. Uh, if any value changes, uh, um, if you want to change any value in your properties file, you don't need to recompile um, your Java class, right? Or if anything changes in your framework uh, or many people are using your framework, right? Um, you just need to change the values in the properties file and not in every Java class, which is where it is being used, right? So the reusability factor comes into the picture when you are uh, configuring your values in the properties file, okay? So it is one way of configuration configuring. There are there could be uh, many other ways uh, in which you can configure your parameters. Okay. Now, how can we use this in Selenium, right? Into our Selenium automation framework. So as I was talking, uh, there are lots of different configuration parameters which you'll be using um, in your framework. Some of the examples could be uh, environment details, uh, user credentials, database details. Right. So instead of hard coding these in the scripts, right, make it reusable. So keep it in the properties file. And if these values are repeatedly being used um, at different places of our framework, if uh, you want to change anything, like say, for example, the database URL, right, you don't need to change it everywhere. Just change it in the properties file and it will be used across your framework, right? The other uh, useful feature of uh, properties. Um, file in automation framework, especially in Selenium is it can be used as an object repository, right? So if you want a place where you want to store your elements and the properties, you can use um, this properties file, right? It, you can store all your elements with the identifiers. And then um, with the help of a properties file, you can get um, whichever element you want at any place of your framework, right? So very similar to page object model, but this is a little different concept where you uh, create your own object repository. Okay, so let's now see how this can be used uh, in real time. Okay, so for that, I will go back to my project and here uh, it is just a very simple script which I've created, which is going to um, open the Google page and then verify the title, right? So there's a assert statement and um, the simple statements which will kind of open a browser and it will go to this URL and then get the title, right? So if you look at the script, right? There are two uh, prop or, or two parameters which are hard coded here, right? So you can say the driver path is hard coded and the URL is hard coded, right? Now, in terms of reusability and extensibility, right? Which are uh, the two main principles of any automation framework, right? Which it should be based on. So to make it more reusable or extensible, you can actually parameterize these values, right? Um, you don't want it to be hard coded. Now, how we can do that? We can do that with the help of properties, okay? So um, there are two things which we need to do, right? Um, what we'll do is, under source test resources, we are going to create a, a properties file, right? So what I will do is I will create a application dot properties, right? 
so application dot properties and then i will i will create another file called framework dot properties now you can also keep it inside a single property file uh, but i'm um for you know for using it more efficient effectively inside a framework i will i will put it inside two different properties file and i will, I will explain you why i'm doing that right so as i said there are um, basically two kind of values which can be parameterized here so my first one is the url and it will be going under application dot properties so what does it mean right so application dot properties can be used to keep all the parameters which are specific to your application right so a web, a web application you can say so the url your um, db properties or anything related to your application right then framework dot properties could be something which is framework specific right for example uh, in our case it is the driver url right so there could be a lot of different um, parameters which you can uh, put it in framework dot properties okay so um, let's put first the application dot url okay and we will put this url value here okay so this is how and you don't need to put any um quotes or anything here because both of them are considered as string right so you can just write any um any key and the value which you intend to do right so it is going to pick up both as a string uh, similarly we can do it for framework dot properties okay so let's put our driver dot url or driver dot path in framework dot properties okay so i will say chrome dot driver dot path equals to so um what i'm doing is i'm using a naming convention here right so you can take it as a best practice it is uh, quite recognizable what i'm writing here right what i'm storing here so it's easier to understand okay so this is our framework level specific parameter and this is application specific parameter so we have kept it in two different properties file okay so that's the first step right now how do i extract this properties file right so for that um actually i need to create a utility which can actually uh get this value for me right so let's do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a property file utils class here where i'll be writing all my methods for properties right so so inside this i'm going to write a method public static and it is of properties type right so it will be re returning a properties for me so it comes under the java dot util class so public static properties and then i will name it load properties okay now in this i'm going to take the parameter as string path so that it will pass the file path where it is located okay now we'll be using the properties class okay to create a new object so properties and we'll say properties equals to new properties okay now we will say we need to read that particular value from that file right so we'll say file input stream and file make calls to new file input stream and uh, we will use the path here right and then we will say properties dot load so this will be this is one of the methods which is used to load the file 
okay so once we get the file we can put it in the load so there are some errors which are popping up um, if you have worked um, on reading any file in java you will note that um, it needs to be surrounded by trackage blocks because it throws an un unhandled exception if in case there is no file in that path um, it will handle that exception okay so let's do that let's surround it with try and catch okay so that it doesn't give that error okay and for properties that load um, you also need to add another try catch block in order to handle exception okay so it's a io exception and this is file not found exception okay so both the uh, exceptions are handled here and then um, we are using the file input stream to kind of read all the file content okay so let's see now okay um, now it is throwing an error which is missing return statement because we have not returned anything till now okay so let's return our value here which is return properties right now this uh, method is done now public static uh, we, we need another we need another method in order to um, get the property right so public static again it will be properties type and then i will say this will be used to load the specific properties now we have two types of properties if you see i'm just making it easy to access it from the script right so i will say load application properties okay and here i will say properties props properties equals to load properties and here i'll be passing the path source test resources and we have application dot properties right now what i will do here is i will return the property okay so this is for loading the application property this is the generic load properties method and then um, i can also have another one for uh, loading the framework properties now this is just to make easier things easier while accessing these methods but you can only uh, work with just a single method and then call that method um, in your script okay so here um, i can change the path like framework dot properties okay now in the script in the script uh, we need to change this paths we need to replace it with the uh, properties okay so how do we do that what we'll do here is i will put another string which will get um, my specific driver path right so driver path equals to property file utils now i can access my methods so it's under load framework properties right and here i can see another method i'll be using which is get property okay here you can mention um what you had given the key so that it can get the value okay so chrome dot driver dot path right this is the key which we have used to store our value and when we uh, put this key and use this method get property it will return us the value and it will store it in this string right now you can easily use this um, in the driver path okay similarly um, for url now 
I can either create a string here or I can directly put it inside that as well. So what I'll do is string URL and again, property file utils dot load application properties this time, get property. And here I'll be using the application dot URL. This is the key we are using, I believe. So what you can do, you can put these two at the beginning of your class, right? And then you can use it throughout your script. So here I, I can replace it with the URL, right? And I will just verify whether you put the right, okay, uh, right key or not, okay? So this uh, solves our purpose. Now we are loading our values, our parameter values from the properties file, which we have created, right? Similarly, you can put any number of um, parameters in this properties file in application.properties, framework.properties. You can also have a user.properties, which will have kind of sensitive data like your username credentials, username passwords, which you don't want to share, okay? So it will be specific to your machine or your workspace. You don't commit it into a repository and there you can store your all your uh, credentials, which you don't share with anyone else. But these properties could be shared across your team, right? Because these are specific to application and framework. Okay, so uh, finally, let's run this and verify whether it's working or not, okay? So as you can see, uh, it launched the browser. It uh, also launched the application which we intended. So both of the values are getting picked from the environment files, right? As expected. Okay, so um, this is taking some time uh, because maybe of my internet connection, but uh, that's what um, I wanted to show you in this particular video where we learned how to uh, get the properties or how you can use the properties file in order to store your uh, parameterized values, okay?